Thank you for that introduction, and thank you everybody for joining today's webinar. My name is John, and I'm the Product Marketing Engineer here at Teledyne LaCroix, and I'm the presenter of this year's Coffee Break webinar series. So today is part four of a 12-part webinar series on oscilloscope basics, where today we'll be covering how high does my oscilloscope sample rate need to be. You can see I've listed the first six parts of this webinar series here on this slide, and they occur on the last Thursday of every month. So you can be sure to register for all of them ahead of time using this hyperlink below. But for now, let's get into part four of this webinar series. How high does my oscilloscope sample rate need to be? Before understanding how high your sample rate needs to be, it's important to know how uh, a digital oscilloscope samples a signal. Essentially, a digital oscilloscope has these analog to digital converters, which sample and hold voltage values from your signal and create discrete sample points from them. Now, these sample points are recorded at a given frequency called a sample rate. So if we were to have a sample rate of five samples per second over the duration of one second, and that means that we would be able to reconstruct your signal using five samples from that signal. And so if we were to have a higher sample rate under the same record length, we would be able to reconstruct the signal using more samples from the waveform. And so the higher the sample rate is, the more accurately we will be able to reconstruct the waveform. Now, when it comes down to how much sample rate you need in your oscilloscope to accurately reconstruct your waveform, uh, if you look up answers online, uh, you'll find a wide range of, um, of answers, uh, ranging from the higher the better, or sample rate needs to be X amount higher than bandwidth. And the real answer to how much sample rate you need in your oscilloscope is a little bit more nuanced than that. Like all specifications we've talked about in this webinar series, the right amount will depend on the signal you are capturing. The important thing to note is you must not undersample. So let's take a look at an example of undersampling. If we were to have this gray analog waveform and this blue digital representation of the waveform, and you can see here at a sample rate of two samples per second, we're not really able to capture the frequency of this analog signal. And that means we have an inaccurate digital representation. Now, if we were to increase the sample rate to three samples per second, you see that we're still not able to capture the frequency of this analog signal. And so essentially, you need a minimum sample rate of two samples per period to accurately digitally represent the signal. Now you may be thinking to yourself, what if my signal isn't a sine wave? Does this 2x rule still apply? And the answer is yes. I'd like to remind you guys of uh, a, an image that we shown in uh, webinar two on oscilloscope bandwidth. And remind everybody that all signals are comprised of a summation of sine waves. And so essentially to apply this 2x rule uh, for a square wave or any of your signals, you would need uh, two samples per period on the fastest sine wave in your signal. So in this case, we would have two samples per period on this blue sine wave in the left image. And that's exactly what Nyquist theory is saying. Nyquist theory states that sample rate must be greater than two times the max frequency of your signal. And so as it pertains to oscilloscopes, you want your sample rate to be at least two times higher than oscilloscope bandwidth. Now, oscilloscope manufacturers typically provide a two and a half times sample rate to bandwidth ratio. A lot of times they provide even more than this, and that's because uh, they're allowing you to capture frequency content beyond the oscilloscope's bandwidth rating. So depending on the oscilloscope you got and uh, its bandwidth, there could be frequency content in your signal that goes beyond the bandwidth of the oscilloscope. But that being said, if you followed all the rule of thumbs that we've mentioned in this webinar series on uh, using rise time to select oscilloscope bandwidth, then ideally your oscilloscope bandwidth is sufficiently higher than your signal bandwidth, and uh, you won't have too much frequency content beyond the bandwidth of the oscilloscope. And so getting sample rate 
that is two and a half times the bandwidth of the oscilloscope, provides the right amount of sample points on your signal's rising edge and is able to accurately reconstruct the signal. So let's take a look at an example of using the rule of thumbs from this webinar series to select how much sample rate we need in an oscilloscope. Now, if you haven't seen webinars two and three, I would recommend stopping this webinar and watching those so you know the rule of thumbs that we've discussed in previous webinars. But if you're up to date with everything, let's jump into this example. So if we had a signal of a one nanosecond rise time, that means that its signal bandwidth using the rise time rule of thumb would have a signal bandwidth of approximately 400 megahertz. So to sufficiently get a, an oscilloscope that has uh, sufficiently higher bandwidth than the signal. The bandwidth rule of thumb states that you need to get an oscilloscope that is three times the signal bandwidth. So in this case, we would get an oscilloscope with 1.2 gigahertz of bandwidth. Now using the sample rate rule of thumb that we learned in this webinar, we would get a sample rate that is two and a half times larger than uh, this oscilloscope bandwidth meaning we would get a sample rate of three giga samples per second. And so taking a look at how three giga samples per second looks on this one nanosecond rise time signal, you can see that uh, with three giga samples per second, we have enough samples to capture the pre-shoot, the rise time, and the overshoot of the signal. We're able to accurately reconstruct the signal using Nyquist sample rate. And so if we were to compare this Nyquist sample rate of three giga samples per second to a higher sample rate, let's say five giga samples per second, um, you know, while the five giga samples per second may be preferred, there is this element of a diminishing marginal return when it comes to uh, the higher sample rate. And that's because uh, since both these signals have the same frequency content, then both of these sample rates are able to uh, accurately reconstruct the signal. On average, they'll have the same pre-shoot, the same rise time, and the same overshoot. Now, you may prefer five giga samples per second if um, there is frequency content uh, beyond the bandwidth of the oscilloscope, and you need sample points for that frequency content. Now, that being said, um, if your oscilloscope doesn't have the bandwidth to see that higher frequency content, then a higher sample rate really isn't giving you more information. The frequency content in your signal is limited to the bandwidth of your oscilloscope. All things being equal, if both these signals have the same signal bandwidth and both of them are captured on an oscilloscope with the same bandwidth, then the three giga samples per second and the five giga samples per second will both accurately reconstruct your signal. The only difference is, is that the five giga samples per second uh, won't be as affordable. The last concept I'll introduce to you guys in this webinar is interpolation. Interpolation is essentially filling in the blanks between sample points. And you can see in the image on the left that with no interpolation, you sort of have a line going between each sample point and you have this rigid waveform. But uh, in our oscilloscopes, you are able to select the type of interpolation you are using. Uh, so if we were to use sine X over X interpolation, then you're accurately reproducing the waveform um, uh, through, uh, through interpolation. And uh, through the sine x over x algorithm, you're able to interpolate uh, how those sample points connect. So just some closing thoughts here. I want to reiterate that sample rate is the frequency at which an oscilloscope's ADC samples a signal. And the number of samples on a waveform will equal the sample rate times the record length. Nyquist theory states that the sample rate needs to be at least two times the max frequency of the signal. And so as it pertains to oscilloscopes, that's usually two and a half times sample rate to bandwidth ratio. That being said, a sample rate much higher than this Nyquist sample rate of two and a half X uh, usually results in diminishing marginal returns for a variety of reasons. Uh, one reason being that 
if you accurately use the rule of thumbs to select the oscilloscope bandwidth and sample rate, then the two and a half times sample rate to bandwidth ratio will accurately reconstruct the signal. And anything more than that is, uh, is, is not really getting more information about the signal. Now, you may want a higher sample rate to capture frequency content beyond uh, the bandwidth of the oscilloscope if that frequency content in your signal does exist. Now, if you want to register for any of the upcoming webinars uh, in the series, we have our next webinar in the series in May. Uh, you can use this hyperlink on this slide, or you could go directly to our website, teledynelacroix.com, click on the Resources tab, then you have uh, Events and Training tab, and then you have the option of selecting between upcoming or on-demand uh, webinars. In either case, there are a wide range of uh, filters and search options that you guys can use to find any topics of interest. The last thing I'll leave you guys with here today is that if you like the examples that I did on the oscilloscope in this uh, uh, webinar, um, then all of them have actually been done in Maui Studio. And if you want the option to uh, try those examples that I've done and uh, reconstruct some of the waveforms that I did, uh, you can download Maui Studio onto your PC and register for a free 30-day trial to, uh, to, to try Maui Studio out. And that concludes uh, part four of this webinar series. If there are any questions, then feel free to email me at jonathan.schechter at teledyne.com. Uh, thank you for joining today's webinar, and I hope to see you at the next one.